hello everyone. Thank you for being here today once again. Um, so today for this workshop, we wanted to talk about creating a social platform race. So it's going to be quite a simple exercise in the sense that we are going to basically reproduce uh, uh, like a social platform race within the game maker and see the logic behind it. And also we're going to check on some notion of theoretical level design on how to make uh, platforming fun and like fun for the player and also in terms of navigation because uh, often uh, throughout the different reviews that I made I encounter some issue with the metrics and the placement of the cameras and with my background working on um, race car uh, I do have uh, some kind of uh, knowledge <laughs> on how to put some assets here and there to uh, actually make a race uh, clear to understand especially when you are in a, in a speed moment and all. So um, we're gonna go through that a little bit. Uh, usually I'm, I'm here with uh, Guillaume and Corentin. Uh, unfortunately they are not available today so it's Benjamin, uh, one of my level designers, who is going to back me up. So thank you, Benjamin, for being here with us today. No problem. Cool. OK, so in terms of presentation, if we go through all this presentation, you're basically going to have, uh, so first of all, obviously, a summary. Uh, so it's basically what I said, a breakdown of the logic. Um, if you were there, like for the last, uh, the previous workshop, um, you might already know some of the logic that I'm talking. Uh, I will talk about, especially on the tree, um, the dialogue trees. But here it will be applied to a very uh, specific, uh, a specific quest. Um, then we're gonna take a look in the game maker and then talk about, like I said, the theoretical aspect and the metrics. And obviously, as usual, we're gonna finish with a Q and A. So what I wanted to say is that. Uh, in this presentation, you have all the breakdown of um, how to uh, make the logic that we are going to look at. So basically, you will have all the, the basics. This was made on Guillaume's work, so I don't want to steal anyone's work and I want to give credits. So thank you, Guillaume, even though you are not here. Thank you, Guillaume, for all the work that you did. So, yeah, all of that. So let's go back a little bit here and then let's dive into the game maker right away all right so um i created this little scene uh, for you today and as you can see i tried to customize it a little bit um, not only to talk about platforming and parkour uh, it's also to show you how organic you can make a scene with just a little bit of work uh, keep in mind that I maybe I spend maybe two hours working on that uh, and the rest was like the presentation itself. But my point is um, that you can really make something believable and fun and yeah, once again, organic uh, in a very short amount of time. So thanks to the game maker and its uh, practicality. So I'm going to start and just wander around in this scene to show you the ID of the whole thing. So we have our character and here we first have an NPC and this NPC will give us a quest. This quest will be for the obstacle course. We have a dialogue tree. Yes, and it's now starting the parkour race. Then we have, um, well, the parkour race itself, showing some different aspect there. Something I want to show you real quick is um, now I, I am in the second state of my quest, which is like uh, activated quest in, in a way. If I talk to uh, the NPC, uh, I have a different uh, dialogue. Then I'm going to go and finish the quest. 
there. I have my trigger here. Parkour race is now done. And if I go back and talk to my NPC, I now have a final bark. Great job, you can be proud of yourself. So this is basically what we are going to look at uh, today. But uh, before going into the logic, um, as you can see, I made another uh, parkour race. Right now, we don't have any quest from this NPC because I'm going to show you directly into the, the game maker. Uh, but as you can see, this parkour race is a bit different. And it's because this one on the left uh, is more oriented on multiplayer. And this one is more oriented on solo type of play. Uh, and I thought it would be interesting to emphasize on both aspects to see how we can make we can make it fun. So um, uh, yeah, we're gonna check the logic of the the whole thing, and then we're gonna check this one, uh, finish the race, and make the whole logic for it. And as you can see here, I have a pit, and if I fall into the pit, I die. This is some little perks I will add throughout the whole thing. So yeah, let's dive into it. Um, so I made on purpose this little like showcase here uh, because it's one way to to um, to get organized basically in your logic. Um, those lines represent different state of the the quest uh, then we have our npc the npc itself doesn't have any logic because we are going through only one important thing which is the speaker that is uh, connected to it um, so uh, this speaker will be basically be the point of uh, connection for all your dialogues. This is what you want to keep in mind. I'm I am aware that uh, uh, this is kind of a repetition, but uh, it's never a bad thing to to repeat uh, ourselves a little bit. And also, like I said, it's going to be connected directly to the whole quest of parkour. So this, like I said, this point is going to be the entry point, and for the moment, those two. Uh, dialogues are not available and this one will represent the first dialogue here you can see an asker we are talking to uh, Jet uh, who, who is our NPC for today uh, asking some questions this time it's only once uh, because this loop will happen only once and then we have the second part of the dialogue uh, which basically will trigger our quest. If I edit the logic, I can see I will send a message. I, as a reminder, the game maker is, ba is based on sending messages. Very important philosophy to keep in mind. So message send, parkour quest start, and in order to start my quest, I'm going to have to go into my rule panel. And here I have my quest registered. And I require a message to start the quest, which is parkour quest start. How do I finish my quest? I'm going to need a message. This is going to be uh, my trigger at the end of the race on the finish line. And then once the quest is completed, I'm sending a message in order to change the state of my NPC and the state of uh, my dialogue. Uh, hope everything is clear for the moment. I'm pretty sure it's fine. But in any case, we're gonna dive into it right away. So let's let's do it properly uh, together. So here I have my character. I'm gonna give it a little bit more space in order to stay organized and 
to show you properly what I want to do. So here is our NPC. I'm going to need one line, one line, one line. So this is going to be my first dialogue, my first state. This is going to be my second state, and this is going to be my third state. For that, I'm going to need two other assets that are going to store, basically, our logic. As a convention, we tend to use the pole there, and the clay ball. There we go. The clay ball, we're going to want this one to be basically around here. It's quite nice. Um, the clay ball and the pole, we want them not to be visible because it's logic, so we don't need that. And without collision, obviously. We don't want this to interfere with the player. There. Um, so let's start with the quest directly. And um, I'm going to call this quest uh, par Parkour Workshop. There. And then quick description, raise the parkour workshop. There. Uh, then I want this quest to be launched on a specific in a specific way. So I'm, I'm gonna need a message. This message is, let's say, it's here. You can really create your your own convention in terms of uh, writings for your message. It's important to try and keep something consistent. Here we usually use a parkour uh, like the the type of the quest, and then a um, space with like dots, and at the end, what's happening. So here I can say uh, workshop dot uh, quest dot start. This could be our whole thing. Then the quest, I'm gonna need wait for message in order to finish it. And it's going to be a uh, workshop dot quest dot finish. Dot quest dot finish. Yeah, I think we're good with that. Then it's going to auto complete itself. And at the end, I'm going to send a message saying end dot workshop. And this will basically take care of all our state for the whole quest. We have our message, so it's good. So how do I trigger my quest? I'm going to need to talk to my NPC. And um, in order to have a nice interaction, so just to make sure I'm not saying any anything weird, I'm going to keep it on the side. Let's see. So yes, this is the quest, we're good, and perfect. Okay, perfect. So like I said, the clay ball is going to be um, without any collision and not visible. And we're going to add a, like it's here, nope, my bad, it's going to be here, it's the speaker component. This speaker component uh, is basically used to interact with uh, the player. So we don't need any text. Uh, and we are waiting for um, a message. It's an interaction. We don't need that much time to hide delay. Um, it's not going to be only once, because we're going to use that um, like all throughout the the the, the game, um, we can st leave always on top. It's not really important here, but what is important is the message that we are going to send. And here we have our NPC, so let's call it NPC uh, dot 
interact. So once again, I'm trying to create a, con a convention uh, in terms of wording. Uh, so I usually, we usually tend to use the name of the NPC. So for instance, before it was jet.interact. Here, I don't have a specific name, so I'm going to say npc.interact. Um, all right, cool. Now that we have that, uh, we also need um, to make sure that we understand that uh, we can interact with our NPC. So I'm going to add something more, which is the indicator. The indicator, we're going to add different aspects. So obviously, we don't want to have the name of the label. And we don't necessarily need a name for the NPC itself. So let's erase that out. Uh, we do need an interaction input. Basically, it's, uh, you know, it's a press E2, blah, blah, blah. And here, it's not to interact. It's actually to speak. So it's going to say press E to speak. We're going to want to have a quest cursor. So that way, you can have the UI of the uh, expl explanation mark. Uh, and here, it's parkour workshop that we want to, to find. So in this list here, you will find everything that you have in your rule panel. Everything that you have here is going to be right there. And we want parkour workshop, because this is the quest we're working on. Then uh, objective receiver, we're not going to use that for this quest. Um, I'm not going to go into details with that today, but uh, I'm sure in the future quest that we're going to talk about, we're going to have like different um, discussion about all of that. So I could use the distance display as well, but it's not useful this, for this one. I want this to be display over. So basically, uh, if I am like uh, inside a house or whatever, I'm going to, in any case, I'm going to be able to see the whole thing. And I'm setting the visibility distance to 200 to make sure that everywhere I am on the map, I can, I am able to see where is the quest. Um, so the vertical set is not going to be necessary for this one and display arrow not necessary as well. And yeah, uh, this is our first step. And now if I start, I can clearly see that I have my uh, NPC, I have the interaction, I have the question mark. So yeah, that's good. But if I talk, I'm using the uh, E key on my keyboard, it's not working. And it's completely normal. So in order to move forward, we're going to need uh, to add some dialogues. So for the dialogues, I'm using my pull asset and once again invisible no collision and uh, here since I want a uh, dialogue I'm gonna add a behavior and an asker let's edit logic I'm not gonna need the health components it's when you add the asker behavior it add automatically the health behavior it's normal because usually you you can use that on NPCs but uh, you don't have to keep the health component. And here, you actually want to remove it. So um, here, the interaction is going to be different because it's going coming through uh, our NPC directly. So let's go with NPC interact. And that's the one we want to use. For this spef specific dialogue, it's going to be only once, since um, we're going to only trigger the quest once. And we're going to want to move directly to our second state, which is uh, a, a bark that would be uh, something more coherent with the state of the, of the quest. Let's change the name. We call that NPC. And um, let's ask like an introduction uh, hi have you seen this parkour race so I don't need another answer 
I'm just gonna keep one saying um, yeah hard to miss I could definitely put other ants if I want to but it's not necessarily important uh, and I want to move forward in my dialogue so I'm gonna say NPC and next for this time boom uh, and this message is gonna be used right after but real quick I'm checking if I'm not missing anything no I'm good perfect so now that I have this first dialogue I'm gonna move to the second one so what I want to do is quite simple is actually duplicate my poll put it right behind and I could definitely go on and on and on and on and on. They have like 10 to or 15 dialogues if I wanted to. But this it's not what we want to focus on today. So here, the good thing is that since I duplicated my first poll that had already all my logic into it, I almost have nothing to change. Uh, there. Okay. Perfect. So I want to start my new dialogue so this one in order to start it it's going to be our previous message which is which is npc.next as you can see it's now orange so i'm using something like an, a message that is already used which is good this one we don't have to put it like in only once because in any case the first uh, dialogue is already taking care of that it's still an, an, an npc uh, le, the speaker name is still NPC, but um, and now we want to start the quest. We want to start the the race itself. So let's say, all right, uh, run then on my way. And finally, the final message is gonna send the message in order to start our quest in order to start okay in order to start our quest here um, we're gonna try and use proper let's see i remember i used uh it was oh actually made the mistake here no workshop quest start is completely fine so this is the message I want to have in order to start my quest, which is workshop quest start. Cool. So that, that, that was the, the whole point of creating our rules at the very beginning is because now I can directly use all the, the um, um, sorry, I can directly use the, the message from my rule panel. Sorry if you hear a bit of noise here and there, um, working from home, so that stuff can happen. <laughs> but sorry about that. Um, all right, so now if I go through all of that, I should be able, let's try that out. I should be able to verify if it's working. So let's speak. Hi, have you seen this parkour race? Hard to miss. All right, run then, on my way. And now that my quest is starting, it will automatically remove the, the exclamation mark, and then the quest is started. It's perfect, it's exactly what we wanted. So now let's move along and do um, our other um, states. So we're gonna need the second state, which is the in-between. And here we're gonna need just a little more detail and this time it's gonna be the toggle behavior. So once again, I'm aware that we talked about this already, but always nice to go back to it a little bit. So toggle behavior. Um, so, sorry, I did logic. Um, for the dialogue itself, um, we're gonna try and find something that is working for this state, which is basically you fall and you are talking again to the NPC and he's saying basically, or oh, you're so bad, uh, you should you should quit, or actually it could be something positive. Let's try and stay positive. Say, um, 
Oh, you fell. Uh, keep keep trying. I'm sure you can do it. Cool. And let, let's say cheers. So yeah, let's let's say positive. And for the message here, we don't need to send any message because it's actually a one if we keep. Uh, we don't need to use um, any message because it's just um, like a blank dialogue. It's just looping if you if you want. But what's going to be important here is how to turn on the state or turn it off. And in order to do that, I'm going to use different messages. So for the we don't need any toggle here, so we can leave it that at none. We want this to be off. Uh, at the start in terms of state and what is going to turn on our state it's basically when we start our quest so what is the message that start our quest it's workshop.quest.start so let's use that in order to turn on this state but at some point we're gonna need this state to stop in order to move to our next state which is when the quest is done. So the quest is done. I already made that up uh, earlier, which is good. It's N workshop. So perfect. I can use this message at some point to turn off this state. And then I'm going to do basically the same, but for my third uh, state so obviously it's going to be the other way around i want to turn on this state and turn off this uh no sorry and uh, turn off the the other one so actually i don't even need to turn it off i don't need anything for this one and it's going to be uh, workshop and workshop sorry because we're gonna stay in this state. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So just to make sure I'm gonna save real quick, have a sip. Perfect. Um, wait, 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 wait. Just give me a minute to think uh, because we are missing, missing something really, really important here. We're missing uh, how to uh, finish the quest. So let's keep it simple for the moment. Depending on the time that we have, we're going to check on on uh, more level design after. But there. All right, something like that should be good. OK, so here I want this to be my Final line there, there, there. All right, cool. Let's say it's our arrival. Um, so as usual, we're gonna use our dear friend, the clay ball, very useful. As usual, this clay ball, we don't want to see it. We don't want it to have any collision, but we do want this clay ball to have a speaker but this time i want this speaker to be an in detect an entity basically turning this into a trigger the detection uh, range is quite high at the moment so let's roll that down a little bit in order for it to to shape the the square of the finish line let's edit the logic to see what detail we have in it so don't need to have it in only once, uh, but the important part is going to be the uh, message that we send once we trigger this volume. So let's go back into our rules and let's see what we need to end the quest. And wait for message, so quest type, wait for message, workshop, quest, finish. So let's use that work sorry 
workshop quest finish. Perfect. So by convention, I use I usually put one on network. All right, should be good. So now what's going to happen is when our player will enter the volume, will trigger this message uh, in order to uh, finish the quest. And since the quest is now finished, uh, we are basically reading the quest and at the end, the quest is sending a message, which is end workshop, and it's gonna change my state. But I could completely use the same message here to trigger my third state. So you have different possibilities. Maybe um, there are some stuff you want to trigger at some point and then um, like put some delay into two triggers. So here it's what I wanted to do because I, I think it's easier to deconstruct that way for, for you to better understand. So if we try, I'm gonna run to my NPC and I'm gonna talk to it. Uh, have you seen parkour race? Yes, hard to miss. All right, run then on my way. The quest is now triggered. I'm gonna run for it. I want to reach my finish line over there. Oh no, I'm not greedy. <laughs> it's a presentation, I don't want to fall. <laughs> All right, so, and here I know I have my trigger. If I go inside of it, you can see my quest is now finished. Can get back to my NPC and see. Oh, so that's interesting. You can see I made a mistake somewhere. So. Basically, our NPC is still in the state number two, which is not okay. So let's see what I did wrong. All right, so our toggle behavior. So we know that from the start, this one should be uh, false. And we know it's turning on thanks to uh, the, uh, the first dialogue. And I think the main issue here is it's not turning on off. So instead of using the end workshop, I'm gonna use the message I'm using f with my detect entity at the end. I think it's gonna be better. So I can't remember, it's workshop quest finish. There. Workshop quest finish. Cool. So now we should turn off it this and this one should be turned on by the end workshop, but in order to make sure it's the case, I'm gonna use the workshop quest finish as well, just to make sure it's working. So let's see, let's try again. Paco race, yes, let's start. The quest is now started, which is good. I want to make sure that I am in my middle state, which is, oh, you fail, keep trying, I'm sure you can do it. Great. Yes, I'm sure I can do it. There, 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 and boom. Quest is now done. Let's go back and see if our third state is now working properly. Oh, it's not working again. Uh, I think I know why actually, yes, <laughs> it's quite simple. I actually completely forgot to change the dialogue itself. So my bad, uh, let's change the dialogue and see, uh, you did it. Yay, happy. All right, yeah, sometimes it's the, like the most simple things that uh, need to be changed and you forgot about them and that's how you make me stay. I'm so sorry about that. Please don't judge me. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's try again. So I think this, this should be good, but always need to be double check. So first state working good. Second state working good.
Now, this message is supposed to be sent, which is good. Let's talk to our NPC and yay, we did it. Now we're good with it. And that's basically how you want to make the quest. So that's great. Perfect. Um, all right, so let's check real quick. Um, I see there are already, no, just discussion for the moment, no question. Okay, yeah, I see uh, you have issue with the frame rate. So I understand the issue. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, keep in mind that I'm actually recording using OBS. So um, uh, you're gonna have like a perfect uh, frame rate on YouTube. So don't worry about that. Uh, but I'm sorry for the quality of the image right now. Um, so now that our logic is done, we can talk about the parkour itself. And like I said before, I'm just che checking the time if we're good. Uh, let's try and use 10 minutes to talk about uh, level design and 10, 10 minutes for the q and I, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, try to think about the question already. Um, it can be... Um, can be nice. So, um, we tend to use those like parkour rays, so you want to try and find some different modules. Um, the first one here on the left is more multiplayer oriented. So, for this one, uh, it's, it's more for like social and multiplayer um, type of, um, of race. So, you can go up to four lines, of course, uh, but uh, you also want to put many lines in order to make sure that uh, your players uh, don't overlap themselves. Because right now you are a single player, so it's quite easy. You can go wherever you want. But imagine now that you have, I don't know, maybe three, four, five, ten players all starting the, the race all together. Uh, it's not good. It's not good. So... Um, uh, try and put as m as much uh, space as possible for the player. Um, three lines is a, is a good in between because you can you can you know you can go on f from one to another. Um, so that that's cool. Uh, also, I tend to uh, advise to put the behavior uh, the platform behavior on the asset, uh, but with no uh, movement at all because thanks to that your as you can see the camera is not clipping through the uh, the asset itself and it's quite convenient when 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 you are racing like this I can move my camera around and I have like no issue whatsoever so this is the kind of tips that can be quite quite useful uh, another aspect that is really important is your metrics so Every time, and it's not necessarily linked to the sandbox, uh, but every time you are making platform or you have your character, you want to take into account its metrics. So how high it's jumping, um, how fast it's walking, how fast it's running. Uh, when you are walking and jumping, how long is it your jump? How, when you are running and jumping, how long is it your jump? All those data is going to be really important for you to use in order to create a nice navigation and a great quality of life for your player. So on basic settings for the, the sandbox, the character is going to jump basically 1.3 to 1.5, let's say. So... Um, so two blocks, you know, you can go, you, it's, it's not possible to go on top. So one block you can, you have the auto climb, but you can also jump on it quite easily. Then you will have the, um, the length of your jump. Uh, walking and jumping uh, is going to be something like six blocks, something like that. But I advise to uh, keep it one block less because even though six blocks is doable, it's it's kind of a pain. Uh, so let's make sure that it's actually fun to play. Let's be f um, forgiven for the player. Player can make mistake. Uh, they don't don't know the the metrics perfectly well. Uh, you want to work with them, not against them. 
Then you have uh, the jump with run. And here, as you can see, it's exactly the same. Uh, here, I think you can go up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, my bad. I, I made a mistake. It was one, two, three, four. So it's like up to five, but I would um, advise four. And here it's up to seven, but I would advise six because it's much better for the player. So once you have that, you can actually work that out and try to make the best out of it uh, for your for your race. So you know, like uh, I can jump like one block height, which is good, but I know uh, if I like I don't want to put um, too much shortness after my my obstacle, otherwise my player is gonna slip and fall. And for the first um, jump, it's it's not quite nice. And here, let's assume that the player don't don't know how to actually run. He needs to be able to jump from one to another. Not everyone has the better skill to to. Uh, so you need to put yourself into. Uh, each individual player, but you can also think about different level of reading. So I can jump and I can jump and run. And as you can see, I actually skipped one. And now I feel smarter because I I actually use something more and I took advantage of the of the environment to be um, to be a better player. And uh, as a player now, I feel smart. And as a designer, you want to make sure that the player feels smart, or at least most of the time. It really depends on, on your intention, but in that specific case. Um, and um, if we go to our next parkour race. So this one, I try to think about it more into like a solo type of experience. So um, let's say you, you are timed. And um, I was also wanted to emphasize on the, the different assets that you have around and the silhouettes that will push the player um, uh, to, to go in the right direction. So as you can see, if you start here, you have like a nice silhouette in the background, like the, the, uh, the, the head of this uh, rock dragon. And it's it's looking in one direction, so it's basically pushing the player in in one direction. But then I go up, and I can I can see those arrows. And um, first, as you can see, I divided my parkour in uh, two different um, navigation, and this is what we call risk reward. Basically, if the player is taking more risk. It should be more rewar rewarded. It's all in the sentence, actually. So here I have one jump that is quite tricky, and that will ask me to go all the way there. So I need to know like how to actually run and jump and 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 time all of that. Or I don't feel quite um, strong enough to do so, and then I can just walk and jump, and yeah, and use another path. And here it's the same thing. I just worked with my metrics. I know those metrics are working as a designer, but I try to twist them in a way that the player will be more challenged. For instance, here, uh, the player has to not only do like a um, very precise jump, it's also a jump that, that is in diagonal. It's not something that ne I never asked to my player before. So is he able to actually do so or not? In any case, if you are really running for it, you can really um, gain some time on it. So it's more risk, but clearly at the end, it's more reward because I will finish the race uh, earlier than the other player. And this is basically what you have like in Mario Kart and all this kind of stuff. And that that's what makes you want to watch it because once when you have like uh, someone that is at the end and uh, and take a shortcut to squeeze everyone and then and then finish first, this is basically what you want to see. And you want to create this kind of experience. Um, and and you need to think this through before in your design in the design of your map. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the idea. Uh, just took 10 minutes, so that's perfect. 
Um, real quick, uh, I just wanted to show you something. Um, one way to prepare, um, uh, sorry, in um, a map like this is usually I tend to go in the library and I took a few assets and I try to create a small pack of assets around that I could push potentially use in my whole level. So that way it creates some kind of a coherence all, all around the, the, uh, the experience itself. Um, and yeah, I'm basically creating some codes. Uh, so those lamps are more considered like obstacles, uh, but also it justifies some kind of a light aspect. So when I'm down there, I, I do have some kind of a landmark to reach to, which is quite interesting. It's the same here with the pink um, uh, gems here. The arrows, uh, obviously they are arrows, but so it's, it's showing a direction. But if you want to be more subtle, you can definitely try and use, for instance, I use this uh, piece of glasses, but um, since it's now merged with the metaverse look, it almost feels like something floating in the air. And I can completely use that to actually push the player to go somewhere and try not to have a too much empty space. So this is really what I wanted to emphasize on is the fact that you can use lots of different assets, flags, something moving, uh, it's quite convenient as well. It can be really great. Uh, maybe at some point the race is getting too long and I need a checkpoint. This asset could be a perfect checkpoint because it's gold, it represents something like valuable. Um, so it could work. Um, may maybe I need, I need some collectibles and these flowers could work perfectly well. Um, so yeah, I'm always trying to think ahead of, on all of that and it really helps uh, uh, like shaping the whole environment. Uh, same with the block, as you can see, I'm using very specific shades of block. And if you look at the overall um, experience, well, at least it's not perfect. Clearly it's not perfect, but it's coherent. It's clear. I understand what's happening uh, everywhere. So yeah. Uh, all right, so thank you for listening to me. Um, I'm gonna dive into the, um, the the chat in order to see if you have like any question. I'm gonna start from uh, the beginning and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so yeah. So this is more an affirmation. Uh, I see some people reacting to that, but the fact that, yes, the fact that you are using some placeholder and hiding your logic in the level instead of putting it on an asset specifically means that you don't have to, uh, you can change your asset basically at any moment, especially if some assets are being worked on. So this is a very good point, yes. Also, true, uh, you can use some different um, components and different behavior to actually change the animation uh, directly on your NPC. So you can manage your NPC movement on one side and ma manage the logic of the whole world on another side. So once again, another great point. Okay, okay, okay. Does the multiplayer players have collision with each other? Uh, no, they don't have collision. But um, like I said before, if you have like an other player or maybe two other player playing along with you, it's it's fine. But let's say you you are like 10 to 15 players and starting all at the same time. If you are only on one line, it's gonna be uh, quite a pain because you have like uh, it's really flooding and getting noisy all around your camera so it's not the best that's why you actually want to have something wider i see someone already answered you so that's cool thank you people for doing that uh no collision place can be bad in terms of you yes exactly what i said thank you everyone for backing what i'm saying um 
Can you show us again in the logic how do you recognize when the player has reached the finish line? Yeah, sure. So it's actually quite easy. Um, this is commonly what we call a uh, trigger volume. So you can take any asset if you want, but uh, as a convention, we tend to use the clay ball. Uh, and if you look directly into the logic here, so I opened the, the, I edited the logic here, so you can have all the parameters. And you don't need any text to display. You need a uh, detect entity. This will detect uh, your player because you want the detect entity to be done by a uh, target with a tag that, that is avatar, which is already the case. Don't need to look at player. It's going to be only once. We don't care if it's always on top as we don't we don't re require any UI, but the main important part that you want to keep in mind is the message after spoken, which is the message is going to send once it's triggered. Good thing about that is, let's say uh, you want uh, to use that as a trigger, but you don't want the player to be the trigger. You can change the tag and say you pick up an object you are actually walking with it around and you actually have to have the item with you with the with the tag with it like item as a tag and if you enter the trigger with the object with the tag you now have a different way and a, a different condition to trigger something okay a speaker without text and with detect entity thank you very much no worries no worries at all Okay, so I see we have three minutes left. So if you have any more question, you are completely free uh, to ask. Um, trying to think about, but uh, the presentation I showed you earlier have uh, basically a breakdown of what I talked about um, in terms of logic, pure logic. Uh, I think we're going to be able to share that with the, with all of you. Uh, just gonna just gonna double check with Becky. Let's um, see. So we have a question. What are the golden rules for good parkour track uh, on Sandbox? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I think uh, it 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 comes more with like platforming in general, not only parkour. Um, so like I said, the first point, you want to be aware of what are your three C's, so camera, character, control. Uh, you want to make sure to understand how your player work. Once you have that in mind, you want to create some little um, spaces in order to have your metrics in mind. And then uh, it's basically some kind of the Nintendo way to do it. You, you First, you start with, I want to jump, then uh, like walk, jump, uh, sprint, jump, but then it's getting boring. So how can I uh, make that less boring? I can add some verticality. So what do I need to create some verticality? Uh, it can be ladders, it can be jump, jump, but uh, in vertical, I can crea create a stair. So trying to work on that aspect. And then you're going to want to introduce different features, different uh, gameplay mechanics around your parkour uh, in order to make it more fun. But the most important part is try not to trick your player. If, if, you, if, if the player is going well, you teach him everything and at some point there is just one thing pushing him uh, off the stage for some no reason at all, it's going to be frustrating. You want to show earlier that uh, there is a possibility that this will happen and how it works and yada yada. So, um, yeah, it's more about the one of the golden rule would be try and be careful with the frustration and make sure not to trick the player. This, this is really important. For the three lanes to finish the parkour, should they always be the same? Well, the thing is, um, it's like uh, atle uh, athleticism. Like uh, when uh, runners are starting, they are starting at a different length. 
uh, of the racetrack. Otherwise, it would be cheating because um, uh, one would have like a shorter uh, length to to run and another one a very longer one. So it's it's not it's not cool. So here it's basically the same. Um, one thing I wanted to show as well is the possibility to make like some some uh, uh, turns. But if you make turns, it means that at some point you're gonna want to have another turn that will put advantage um, to uh, every player. Otherwise, like I said, uh, it's it it will be frustrating and unfair, and you don't want people to get unfair. You want basically your um, parkour or your ba an arena or whatever. You don't want your player to complain about it's the environment fault. If if they if they lose, it's because they are not good at it. But it's not because you are a bad designer, and it's something you 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 have to to be careful about. So yeah. So uh, to answer your question, uh, should they always be the same? In a sense, yes, it would be it would be better. Uh, but you just have to look in any sports that that have uh, arenas or racetrack, or it's all about balancing. Um, can you reshow how disappeared the question mark? Well, if you if you uh, follow properly the the whole thing, it should be quite uh, easy actually. So uh, let me see. So, like I said, I'm using one asset that will be my central point to interact with all my different states. So better to actually put it that way there imagine you have a tree now this is my base and it goes one two and three I hope you can see my cursor it might not be the best let's see one two and three right so since here I'm gonna have my question mark I just I use my indicator in my giver, so it's giving me the quest. So naturally, it, it will create a explanation mark. Um, I just have to list my uh, quest in question. So here it's my Paco workshop, and uh, once it's done, so basically in the code when the the state of the quest is started, it will automatically uh, remove the giver because it's considered validated. And that's it. It's that simple. And real quick, uh, the objectives and the receiver, it's, it's, the, the, it's following the state of the quest. Objectives could be uh, you need to collect X amount of flowers. So you can put on the different flowers uh, an indicator as objective, put, uh, so it wouldn't be parkour workshop, but uh, something I could do is objective is my, uh, my uh, clay ball here. So I, I would just need to put an indicator, put my clay ball uh, to put um, sorry what's what's the name of it again there put my cable as objective in the indicator and then we're good I could definitely do something like that and then receiver is once you you are done with it you are coming back to uh, either your NPC directly or uh, to let's say a completely other NPC in the map and if I'm not mistaken it should be a question mark because this is uh, like uh, I think like in World of Warcraft ex uh, expansion mark then objective then question mark to finish all right we are already a bit uh, above the time uh, but uh, I can see you had some great questions everyone so thank you for that thank you for participating uh, I saw also everyone talking in the chat talking about uh, 
the, the different things that you know. Uh, so uh, I can clearly see you have some knowledge. It's really, I'm really glad uh, to see that. Um, this uh, video, uh, this workshop will be, is entirely recorded, will be uploaded on YouTube. Um, and I'm gonna stop here, by the way. <laughs>